Greetings, and thank you for tuning in to the Active Transportation Resource Center training series. The purpose of our FLASH trainings is to provide quick tutorials on key topics and tools for the Active Transportation Program applicants and prospective awardees. This training is part one of a three-part series on the Transportation Injury Mapping System, or TIMS, ATP tool. The Active Transportation Resource Center's mission is to assist California's communities, tribal areas, and schools with resources, technical assistance, and training to help implement active transportation projects. I will now turn it over to Ted Devini, Caltrans Senior Transportation Engineer and ATP Program Manager. Hello, I'm excited to get this opportunity to share the new UC Berkeley TIMS ATP tool. The flash training for the new TIMS ATP tool has been organized into three parts. The first part, which we're currently going through, is a general discussion on the new tool, how it works, and how to maximize its value. Then, this training will be followed up by two separate trainings for both infrastructure and non-infrastructure projects. We'll give examples, and they'll include live demonstrations that show the functionality of the tool. Okay, the main learning objectives for this training are as follows. An overview of the new tool and a little background on why it was developed for ATP. How to use the tool to effectively capture the required maps and data summaries for your ATP projects and applications, how to analyze the maps and summaries to help address safety in your project or in your ATP application, and finally, how to maximize the value of the new TIMS ATP tool. An overview of the ATP TIMS tool. Um, TIMS, which stands for the Transportation Injury Mapping System, was developed by UC Berkeley Safe track. You can access this tool in the web link shown here. TIMS provides quick, easy, and free access to California's crash data, which is housed in a database called SWITERS, which stands for Statewide Integrated Traffic Record System. The SWITERS data is not geocoded, so what TIMS does is takes the SWITERS data and geocodes it and then incorporates it into the TIMS database system. In this process, not all crashes can be geocoded or mapped. It's also important to note that when a crash happens, it may take several months for the crash to show up in the SWITERS and then also to show up in the TIMS tool. The intended users of this new tool are applicants for ATP Cycle 4 and then more importantly, any local agency planner, engineer, or local community members that are interested in active transportation. One thing to keep in mind is that the first time users need to set up a free account, and this is a pretty quick and easy process, takes about five minutes. The key elements of the tool that we were going to be talking about today are the six primary steps that the tool goes through and the tool's instructions. The first step in the tool, a user is going to select the county and the city that the project is in, and then the crash factors and the time factors that they want to utilize. In this particular example shown in this flash training, we are using a project that was funded in cycle three. As shown here, all the different factors are checked. So even though this project is not on a state highway system, it's okay to check it because we just won't be utilizing that data. We also, this project incorporates pedestrian and bicycle crashes, and we are looking for all crash severities. As you will see, we are selecting crashes between the years 2010 and 2014. The Years 2015 to 2017 are shown with an asterisk because the data in those years is provisional and has not been approved by the SWITERS database. The end of step one, users will be shown this table below, which shows the total crashes in 
the jurisdiction provided, whether it be the city or the county. In this case, it's the city of Baldwin Park. In step two, the user identifies where their project location is within the jurisdiction. You will see the jurisdictional boundaries, and then the user clicks in the approximate center of their proposed project. Another thing to note on this um, jurisdiction-wide map is the intensity scale of the crashes. For this particular jurisdiction, there's no red intensity or really high crash concentrations. And that's because the intensity scale is shown at a statewide level. So there, it just means that there are other locations within the state of California that have higher crash intensities. So moving on to step three. In step three, you get this, what we call a community heat map. And that is, it, it now only shows the crashes within the boundary that the user has set. And in this map, just have the intensity scale of the crashes have been rescaled to show the highest crash location within this community as red. Then the user will go in and show the exact project limits. You can see here on this map that the project limits are essentially a line that kind of bends off to the right as you go down. You can also see that the proposed project limits are in one of this community's highest crash locations. After the user defines uh, the limits of their project boundaries, the tool then automatically creates this collision map and it scales it to the limits of the project. In this collision map, it shows the location and provides a symbol for each of the past crashes. In the symbol, you can tell whether it's a pedestrian crash or a bicycle crash, and you can also tell the severity of the crashes. In the active live view, users can go in and click on each of the symbols, and it will show more crash details, and it will also allow the user to go directly to a Google Street View. Then, once the user has defined its project boundaries and reviewed its crashes, they can go on to step five, which is to review the data and the graphs. The TIMS tool automatically prepares a series of bar graphs and line graphs and creates a collision list of all the crashes within the project boundary. Users can also use additional tools within the larger suite of TIMS tools to create pie charts, and other bar graphs, which also provide tables of um, different crash factors. The final step is, is step six, and in this, users can print all of the heat maps and data summaries that they have created in the tool. These prints will be required for their ATP applications and can be useful to document the issues within their proposed project limits. Tool instructions. The ATP TIMS tool has a very detailed step-by-step -step instructions for first-time users. The TIMS instructions have an index on the left that shows the, the different tools and then the different elements in the tool. As you can see in this screenshot, we are in the ATP Maps and Summary tool, and we are on step six. And then on the right, you can see more detailed instructions that the user needs to know as they complete step four. As I mentioned before, we will be going through detailed example projects in part two and part three of the flash trainings for the ATP tool. In part two and part three of the flash trainings for the TIMS ATP tool, we will be going through some detailed examples. In this, we will provide live demonstrations of the tool's six-step process. We will go through the instructions for the tool, and we will also provide more information about 
what types of data analysis users are encouraged to look into. Okay, the Cycle 4 application requires applicants to attach the following TIMS ATP tool output. And that includes the heat maps and the project area collision maps shown earlier, and also any collision summaries and collision lists that the user feels are important to document the issues going on in their ATP application. It's important for users to understand that if they have numerous collision summaries that are printed out separately, they need to be combined into one PDF file. Applicants will need to reference these attachments um, to show that their project limits represent one of the agency's top priorities and that the improvement locations of their particular project correspond directly to past collision locations and that the safety improvements address some of the underlying factors that contribute to the past pedestrian and bicycle collisions. Initially, the value in the ATP tool is that it allows the evaluators to quickly look at projects and determine which ones have the best chance of furthering the ATP goal to increase safety and mobility for non-motorized users. But in the long term, there's much more value that the ATP tool can provide. First, it can inform local agency and regional agencies and community members of some of the most severe active transportation safety issues and locations in their communities. <clears throat> Finally, we hope that local agencies will prioritize their limited transportation funding to projects that will be most effective in addressing these issues. Caltrans and the UC Berkeley TIMS team are open to suggestions on how the new TIMS ATP tool can be improved. Caltrans and the UC Berkeley TIMS team are committed to looking for new ways to improve both the TIMS ATP tool and the TIMS suite of tools in general. We are looking to local safety professionals and community members to help us with this effort. So as you go through cycle four, working with the TIMS tool, if you can come up with any suggestions on how to improve the ATP tool, or new tools, we encourage you to email UC Berkeley at the link below. So keep in mind that any of your ATP-related questions should be directed to Caltrans. Caltrans has district ATP coordinators throughout the state. For a list of these coordinators, please go to the Caltrans ATP website at the link shown here. At this point, I want to say thank you. We appreciate your efforts towards increasing safety and mobility for non-motorized users.